Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Monday, October 12th, 2020, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Tuesday, October 13th. Futures are down slightly in after hours action after we saw a strong start to the week on Monday. Um, looking at our agenda today, going to get into the daily market recap. In the news, um, got a company that reported some nice upside guidance after hours. Want to talk a little bit about that. Then uh, talking technically, uh, the top four industry groups, uh, very familiar leadership to what we saw back in March, April, May, and throughout most of the pandemic. Top four groups, uh, I think you'll recognize, go through those. I've got a charting tip of the day today. Um, so I want to uh, show you a little bit about how I set up my relative strength um, panels and also how you can set a chart style button so that you can easily switch to that uh, style whenever you like. Then we'll get into chart lists. This is something I've started recently, just going through some of our key chart lists at Earnings Beats, looking for some of the top uh, stocks in those chart lists. And uh, given time, we'll take a look at some of the worst performers as well. Uh, earnings Spotlight. Really, we're starting to see some uh, big earnings kick off Tuesday morning, tomorrow morning. And uh, I'm going to give you a look at some of those charts uh, and tell you what I'm expecting. And then we'll wrap up the show as we always do with the three you must see. Uh, before we get into any of that, though, I do want to just point everyone to earningsbeats.com. Uh, I'd love to have you join. We've got a free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. Simply type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button, and we'll make sure you get your copy of the Earnings Beats Digest, which uh, is published three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday mornings. And um, really, it focuses on relative strength, earnings, uh, things that are really important to us at Earnings Beats. So it'll just give you a little bit of a flavor of what it is that we do and how we look at the market. Um, we do have a members-only event coming up on Tuesday evening, Max Payne, October 2020. And uh, we've got a, some interesting stocks that you should be aware of as we approach monthly options expiration on Friday. I think we're going to see some big reversals in some key stocks. I'll be talking about that after the close on Tuesday, starting at 4.30. If you'd like to be part of that, uh, you can join our service here with this green Join Today button. One of the keys to our service, uh, at least one of the things our members really like, are our four portfolios. You can see just absolutely crushing the S&P 500, so really good performance there. You can take a look at those numbers. They get updated every single day after the market closes, but uh, if you really want to check out our service, do so by clicking on the join today, get an idea of some of the things we offer. Um, it's only seven bucks and it gets refunded to you. So literally a 30 day trial, that's no cost. Um, love to have you come in and check out the service and join us for that Max Payne webinar on Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. All right, what happened in the market on Monday? Well, it was a good day. Dow Jones Industrial Average up 250 points, which was up about uh, almost nine tenths of 1%. The S&P 500 up more than 1.6%, up 57 points, not far from an all-time high. We are really accelerating again to the upside. The NASDAQ up almost 300 points, more than 2.5%. Um, that's a good month, and yet we did that just today. Uh, so NASDAQ having an excellent day. Mid caps up uh, just about two-thirds of 1%, small caps a little bit more than that. So really across the board, we saw positive action. Leadership came in uh, very good form on Monday. Technology up 2.73%. Communication services up 2.64%. The weakness was found in materials, which had a fractional loss. But if you take a look at that uh, loss, it did occur right at resistance. So not too surprising. We got a little bit of a pullback there. Communication services and technology, you can see, still have a little bit more room uh, to negotiate before we get back up near those September highs and all-time highs. As far as industry groups go, computer hardware, huge, huge day on Monday, up more than 6%, 351 points, really big day for Apple, um, and that helped to lead the computer hardware group higher. To the downside, uh, non-ferrous metals, and like the materials group that was right at overhead resistance, 
check out non-ferrous metals right at that overhead resistance. So we got up, had some uh, technical selling, I think, that took place today in that particular area. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to take a look at the 10-year Treasury yield. First off, uh, there was no action in the Treasury market on Monday um, as the Treasury market was closed in observance of Columbus Day. So we'll see the market, that market open back up again on Tuesday. Um, we do have September CPI and core CPI out, and the expectation is we're going to see a drop. August, both of those numbers came in with a rise of four-tenths of 1%. September, expecting half of that with a rise of two-tenths of 1%. So we'll see how uh, the inflation numbers come in on Tuesday morning. That could certainly have an impact on what we see in the 10-year Treasury yield. Um, breakout above 0.8%. Percent, I think would be very bullish for equities. Normally equities move in the same direction as the 10 year treasury yield. So let's see if we get that breakout above 0.80. The bigger number I think on the chart, if we look back over the intermediate term is gonna be getting above that June high, 0.95%. Um, I think on a closing basis, maybe 0.91, got a little bit more room. And if we do make our way toward that uh, 0 0.9 to 0 0.95 area, expect that uh, the S&P 500 is going to be making a pretty good move, likely into record high territory as a result. Okay, let's move on to in the news. In the news, we had um, Ethan Allen Interiors issuing upside guidance after the bell on Monday. Uh, the group, or the stock, I should say, after getting a 50-day test, has come back up over the last seven or eight trading days and gone back to a new high over the past six, seven months. So good action there. That's without the after hours action. Um, ETH up more than 13% in after hours, more than $2. So we're looking at probably around the 1770 area um, as a possible open on Tuesday. We'll see what happens after that. But uh, really good action in ETH after hours this evening. Talking technically. Um, all right, I wanna go through some of these, uh, the leaders that we saw on Monday, and these are gonna be familiar. I'm gonna just uh, make this chart just a bit bigger. Bear with me a second. All right, so here we've got the computer hardware group, and there is your bearish engulfing candle at the top in September. Remember we had sentiment issues. I talked about being very careful in September, um, and we did pull back, had a really rough September in many areas of the market, especially areas that had been leading. But I believe we are now resuming our strength back to the upside. I see a lot of confirmation in this market. I believe we're going to break back to new highs. And I think the fourth quarter will be strong. Um, the bigger question in my mind is what leads. And currently we're seeing the uh, computer hardware group breaking back out to its highest level now in over a month, in about five weeks. I think that's very bullish. Uh, on a relative basis, you can see the relative strength also moving to about a five-week high. The accumulation distribution in this group remains strong. Uh, really nothing uh, bearish that I see in the chart here. Moving to the next group, how about Broadline Retail? This uh, is uh, home to Amazon. And uh, I think it's even do doing better than computer hardware, getting very close to its high from early September. Looks to me like off this uptrend, we can look at this maybe as a cup. So I think if we do get up to about 3,500, 3,550 in that area, maybe we get a little bit of a pullback at that point. Accumulation distribution remains strong here. And on a relative basis, we're getting close to a new relative high. Very strong action here. The third best performing group, internets. Um, this is a group I've been looking for to make a comeback, and I believe we are getting it now. Once again, as we saw with the last two charts, internet stocks moving to a five-week high, and uh, now looking up at that September high with potentially a cup forming. I think we're going to continue to see a movement to the upside. I like that PPO breaking back above the center line. The AD line is sitting almost at a 52-week high, even though price is not. Uh, so I think that there's been some accumulation taking place throughout this consolidation. I find that to be bullish. And from a relative strength basis, uh, I believe we remain in an, a general uptrend, relative uptrend. And we did move to about a one-month relative high 
on Monday. I expect that we're going to see continuing relative strength here in internet stocks. And the last one I wanted to bring up was the toys index. Toys was one of, this was a group that was really one of the leaders uh, coming off that low in the, the pandemic. And as you see the move down in March, look at the AD line, never went back and put in a low below that late February low. So it held that. And then as the index began rebounding, you can see the AD line just kind of took off and we're still near a high. Um, this is a group that actually topped back in August, not September. Uh, we have taken out the September high and now all that's left is that August high. So resuming some leadership here in the toys group, something to keep in mind as we go uh, further and further throughout the earnings season. All right, next up, uh, charting tip of the day. So I had a member write to me and ask me how I set up my relative um, strength charts and all the panels. So I thought I would just take a second to uh, do that for you. So I'm just gonna pick Apple as the one to do it. So as you can see here, all I have right now is PPO, the uh, price chart volume and the accumulation distribution. And you can see down here, that's how it's set up. So I'm gonna add the various panels so, I can, so you can see exactly how I do this. Uh, I'm gonna do it using the price indicator. So I'm just gonna bring up a few of these. And so the way I set mine up is um, first thing I wanna do is I set it up based on industry. So dollar sign industry. Uh, so when you pull a chart up, that first price panel is gonna be industry. I always like to set this as a solid thick line and I put the height at 1.0. I do that on all of these. Um, next up is the symbol, dollar symbol relative to dollar industry. That's usually the second one that I have, thick solid line, height 1.0. Next up, I do dollar symbol, colon, dollar SPX. Again, solid thick line, height 1.0. And then the last one I do is industry, dollar industry, colon, dollar SPX. So that's just going to give me the peer group relative to the S&P to see whether or not uh, the stock that I'm looking at is in a strong group relative to the S&P 500. A solid thick line, height 1.0, and that should do it. So let's go ahead and update this. Um, and I'm going to make the chart a lot bigger so that I can actually see what's going on on each of these panels. And there you have it. So there's your PPO, here's your price action, here's the accumulation distribution. Here's a chart of the computer hardware, which is what the industry group that Apple is in. Then I've got Apple relative to computer hardware. I've got Apple relative to the S&P and I've got computer hardware relative to the S&P. So this is exactly the way I want it set up. Uh, I really like charts that show the uh, movement from left to right going higher across the chart. That's just telling me a leading stock in a leading industry group. That's how you can see it very quickly. Um, then there's the setting up of the chart style button. So, you know, every time I go, you know, to another chart or to another uh, um, default chart setting and I come back to this, I don't want to have to go down to the bottom and type this in every time. So one of the things that's really nice, really good feature at Stock Charts is you can hit this little plus button over here and it's just asking you to give a description. So I'm just gonna type this up as a relative strength test. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm gonna call it, add new. And so there it is there at the bottom. So the next time I just pull up a chart for the default um, which is, uh, let's see, what else do we, how about we do Amazon? All right, so now Amazon, you can see, I've just got it, my regular chart. I don't have, you know, all the different relative strength. I could go down here and add it manually if I want, but I've set up this chart style button. So now on Amazon, all I have to do is hit this button and there it is. So very, very easy to construct your charts, save them, over here with these chart style buttons. It'll save you a ton of time.
So make sure that you uh, check that out on, and are aware how to use that. All right, let's keep moving on. Still got a lot to go over here. Chart lists. So this is a new feature that I began showing on, uh, or I began showing on uh, Trading Places Live over the past week or so. Um, at Earnings Beats, really one of the key things that we do is we um, have a, you know, the, our entire service to me is really a research platform for our members. And part of that is putting together these various chart lists. Uh, so for instance, we have a strong earnings chart list. Um, and on this chart list, there are right now, if I hit this edit list button, you'll see that there are 328 different companies on here. And they represent companies that in their latest quarterly earnings report, they beat Wall Street estimates as to both revenues and earnings per share. So both top and bottom line, they are liquid. So I run the filter. I mean, I look at the chart, make sure I feel like they're liquid enough to trade for our members. And then I look at the technical. So I'll pull up that relative strength chart list. So the first one on the list here, AMRC, you can see this is a stock that's been trending higher. Um, it probably came out with earnings right around here. That would be my guess. Um, because essentially now what I have done, and this is a, a revolving list. So I'm constantly deleting stocks off of this strong earnings chart list as it approach, as those companies re, um, approach their upcoming earnings report. And then if they beat top and bottom line, I still like the chart, then I'll put them right back on this chart list. But as they approach it, uh, we take it off. So um, any, any company that's on the list, for the most part, uh, you don't have to worry about earnings coming up. Now, to be safe, you should probably always check any stock that you're about to trade because I've seen stocks report, um, you know, say the beginning of August and then come back and report middle of October. So two or three weeks earlier than you would have expected. So it's always possible. So you want to be checking these things out. But AMRC, if you look at the chart and here's the relative strength, I mean, you know, heavy construction moving higher. Amoresco relative to heavy construction, it's a leader near 52 week high, relative to the S&P 500, it's setting a new relative high. And then heavy construction relative to the S&P just broke out to about a seven or eight month relative high. You know, you can see all the way back here since the last time it was this high. So we're seeing a strengthening group and you've got a leader. These are the types of stocks that will be in our strong earnings chart list. Um, but anyway, if I hit this view all button, and hit the summary, I can sort this based on which stocks have performed the best on this chart list. And if I hit the percentage change again, I'll see the, the weakest. So for Monday, um, I will take a look here at the weakest, which is Genmark. Um, you know, this is a stock that's lost some key support levels. Uh, pretty rough day the last two or three days. Volume's picking up. I think, you know, there's two key levels on this stock now as I see it. And I'm gonna annotate and just adjust these. But I see, first of all, we've got a high and there's a low. Here's your higher high. And then here is your higher low so far. So that's gonna be an important low to hold, right around $11. If we do fail there, I do not, absolutely do not want to put in a new closing low below the June low because higher high, higher low, higher high, we want to make sure wherever this low ends up, ultimately, that it does not go below $9. So are we going to turn on Genmark at 12 and change? I don't know. Are we going to go down and test this $11? Maybe. Could we possibly go all the way down to $9? Yes. The best time to trade this stock, in my opinion, this is actually one of our portfolio stocks. It's one that is not performing well. Uh, we got into it on August 19th. So you can see this has not been a good performer. Yet all of our portfolios are up this quarter quite a bit. So we don't have too many like Genmark, but this is one that has been under some pressure here. So watch these two levels of support. I would be most interested in a reversing candle. So in other words, big red candle, big red candle, Maybe we get a move down 
and a false breakdown below this 11 level and then come back up above. That could mark a bottom. So those are the types of things that I would look at when I'm looking through our various chart lists and the, and the stocks on here. All right, uh, I'll go ahead and not save those changes. Um, so the best performer on this list was Cloudflare. I mean, this stock is absolutely on fire and it is in one of our portfolios. And as you can see, this one's doing pretty darn well from August 19th, which uh, it was down at about, whoops, over here, probably around 39 bucks. It's now 57. So it's up about 40, 45% in six, seven weeks. So really strong action in Cloudflare. Uh, net big volume on um, uh, Monday to support this huge move to the upside. So this has been a really strong performer. Now it's hard to jump in and chase, but this is a good stock. And if you look at the relative strength, you can see very, very solid action here. Um, I suspect we're gonna see higher prices, but that doesn't mean maybe we don't see a pullback first. All right, other chart lists. Um, our short squeeze chart list. I'm going to show you a stock that is absolutely uh, got the shorts in a box right now, and that is Dillard's DDS. This was the top performer in that chart list. It was up 27% today. We have seen so many of these. You know, I'm not a big fan of the stocks on our short squeeze chart list unless they begin to show strength and they begin to break out and the volume begins to pick up. Look at the volume. It's been accelerating lately on this breakout above the mid-September high. On this breakout, I mean, you can see the relative strength. First of all, broadline retail, it's, a, it's part of a very, very good group. It had been lagging all the way until about the middle part of August. And when it started doing this moving to the upside, check out its relative strength. It is now broken to about a six month relative high versus broadline retailers. Broadline retailers has been one of the strongest areas in the market. So Dillard's is beginning to show a lot of relative strength, a lot of volume, and you've got a lot of short interest and a lot of shorts are squirming right now because of this movement to the upside. So Dillard's great performer within this, in this uh, short squeeze chart list today. OPK, this was the worst performer. Um, it had recently broken back up above moving averages. I think the volume has just been average. Um, on a relative basis, first of all, it's in the biotech space. Biotechs really have struggled versus the S&P 500 over the last four or five months. You can see this downtrend. Opco Health uh, really soared a few months ago on a relative basis, pulled back and is starting to show some strength. But there was definitely weak, weakness on Monday. Watch these two moving averages. I'd really like to see those two hold. I don't make many excuses for short squeeze um, chartless stocks. If they start to roll back over again and they fail to hold uh, price support or moving average support, that's usually a sign for me to get the heck out. Uh, let's see. How about one other one? Um, Let's look at the strong future earnings chart list. And on here, the best performer on Monday was DSKE, Desecki or Deseek. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, very good action here, though, up almost 6%. It is challenging overhead resistance around $7. Maybe the seven, seven and a quarter area presents a little bit of short term resistance, but I do like the overall trend in this stock to the upside. I think relative strength, it's in trucking. Trucking has been strong. Transports have broken out. So I suspect that truckers are going higher. This has been a pretty good stock within truckers. So I would look ultimately for a breakout on this stock. To the downside today within this strong future earnings chart list, PGEN, but this comes on the heels of a really strong move the past couple of weeks where we've gone from about $3.35 up to almost $6 in about maybe six or seven trading days. So yes, it was down 12% today, but this is a very, very volatile stock. Um, watch to see if we get this breakout on a relative basis above all of these tops right in here. That would be bullish along with increasing volume.
So watch for those two things. I really like the big volume from last week. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this gap support between maybe 440 and 480. I would look for that to hold. Note the 20-day uh, rising moving average there at 470, excuse me, 443 um, also should provide some nice support. All right, earning spotlight. A uh, number of companies getting ready to report starting on Tuesday. Some big, big names, Johnson & Johnson. I'm going to go through some of these real quick. I'm going to look at the group, the relative strength versus the group, in this case, Pharma's, the relative strength versus the S&P and Pharma's versus the S&P. And I'm looking at that right now. Not really excited about anything on this chart. Uh, I'm not a fan right now of Johnson & Johnson. JP Morgan, the banks also have been very weak for quite a while. Look at the banks relative to the S&P. Uh, good news is JP Morgan has been a pretty good performer among the banks. So I think this is going to be critical to see one of the leaders within banks. How do they report? We're going to know on Tuesday morning. Citigroup also in the banking space. But look at the relative strength on Citigroup versus the banks. It's been a really bad laggard for the past three months or so. And the group itself is horrible. So I would not be expecting a lot out of Citigroup. Next up, BLK. This is BlackRock. Um, BlackRock breaking out. And relative to asset managers, very strong. The group is starting to show some strength. This one could be an interesting report on Tuesday. So uh, tune into this one. But I, I like this chart better than the others that we've looked at so far. Fastenal, F-A-S-T. Uh, I see a little cup forming. Maybe we can get up to 50 with this cup. The AD line has been pretty strong throughout this entire uptrend. Um, industrial suppliers trying to make a breakout above the September high. On a relative strength basis, the stock's okay. Uh, we didn't say it's a leader, but it certainly hasn't been horrible. So I think Fastenal may come out with a decent report tomorrow. FRC, this is in the banking space. Look at the stock breaking out while banks have been horrible. Look at the relative strength on First Republic Bank of San Francisco. Very strong action. Of all the banks, this is certainly one that I would be interested in. Even though I don't like the group, this is a major leader. Um, Delta Airlines, DAL. This is one that's going to be interesting just because it's in the airline space that's been beaten up for so, so very long. Delta, though, relative to the airlines, it's maybe shown a little bit of leadership here the past 10 weeks or so, but uh, still well off its relative high from back in early March. And then the last one I have for you, this is a much smaller company, AZZ. This is AZZ Inc. Uh, it's been moving up, still needs to negotiate that $38. Look at the AD line. That's been weak. On a relative basis, this has been weak relative to its electrical components and equipment index peers. I'm just not a fan. I would stay away. All right, moving on. Three you must see. Going to go quickly here. First is CF Industries. Uh, the stock failing at the 20-day, rolling back over. AD line moving to new lows. Stay away. Next up, NEO in the auto space. I think this one looks good. I like this bull flag move up. Side, sideways consolidation. It's in one of our portfolios. I like it. And the last one, this is also in one of our portfolios, Wingstop. Really want to watch this support area between about 125 and 130. This is where I want to see a reversal on Wingstop. All right, that's it for today. Everybody have a great Tuesday. Uh, we'll see whether or not the market can continue its move to the upside. Happy trading, everybody. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.